Welcome to the Solid Cam University channel. This video's topic is engraving configurations. So we've seen in previous training videos where you can do engraving using the text sketch entities from SOLIDWORKS. We've also seen how you can use configurations from SOLIDWORKS in your SOLIDCAM programming. In this video, we're going to kind of combine those together for text engraving. So we're looking at a part here where I have some engraving toolpath. I have an engraving toolpath for that text on the top there and I actually have a block letter on the bottom there. And the way I did the engraving, just as a review, let's go into this toolpath here, is when you choose your geometry, you'll skim all the way down here to multi-chain. And then under multi-chain, you'll add the type of text. And then you just select your text. Once you hover your mouse over there and you see that letter, you know it's about to select the text. You grab that guy there. And then when you click the green check mark, what it does is it takes that text and turns it into profile geometry, something you can use like that. And then after that, it is very similar to the profile toolpath. You choose your tool, you choose your levels. In this case, it'll say engraving depth instead of profile depth. And then you set up your engraving here. So if you want a little more detail on this, you can check out the training videos on our YouTube channel. But essentially, this is just the regular engraving toolpath that we've seen before. And in terms of the configuration setup, Again, very similar to what we saw in the previous video. You'll go into settings. And in your settings, what you'll want to do is under uh, synchronization, you can tell it to associate the geometry with the current configuration. So when you toggle between your configurations, it'll look at the current status of the part file and update any features that have already been programmed. In this case, we're doing it for the text, uh, but that doesn't update with each uh, configuration because that's not a dimension or a location. So how we handle that is what we're going to cover in this video. But essentially what you want it to do is look at the current configuration for the geometry. And then once it recognizes a change in the configuration, you get it to synchronize automatically, and you get it to calculate the operation automatically. Now this is not entirely necessary for configurations, but it's a kind of a quick way to get your part up to date once you do the configuration change, and then you just post your code. But that is really just how we handle configurations in general. But when you come over here and you toggle between your different configurations, that is for things like pockets, whole locations, uh, linear geometry, uh, but that's not text. Text is not something that is defined by dimension. Usually when you do configurations with, with sketches, they don't really update unless you do something special. And again, that's what we're gonna cover here, but I just wanna show you how this works here. So if I just double click on this configuration, you'll see that the part number changes to 0, 2, and it changes to the letter B. If I do the third part, 0, 3, and the letter C. So essentially, it is updating with that text. Now, how did I get it to do that is the trick we're going to cover in this video. So I'll just exit out of the part file. Okay, and we'll go to the original part. So how I actually configure this is two things inside this model file. One is in the actual sketch, we go over to, let's say, this first one here. It's a regular sketch. I've given it a line that I want it to stay uh, aligned to, but you'll see here that the text is not the actual text that I put there. I put a little bit of a pointer here. This is kind of like an internal programming that we're doing here. And this little dollar sign, PRP colon, uh, uh, quotation mark, the variable name, in this case, part number, and then the close quotation mark, that is calling out a variable called part number. And that variable can be found in the document properties. So we'll go up, up here. Under configuration specific, I have part number. So you can see that it's calling out the 01. And then letter, it's calling out the A. In this case, I made that one a block letter. That's more to do with the font than anything else. But this is a, these are two variables that are called out in the different configurations, as you see there. I cancel out of here. Let's go back to this part, double click on that, and you can see that it updates the text. So the actual text entity inside the sketch is looking at that variable, and then in the document properties, I just type in whatever I want. And because it updates the sketch, and because the toolpath that I programmed inside SolidCAM is tied into that geometry, it'll update that as well. So this is how you can get configurations with your text, basically with engraving. Uh, and you could do the same sort of thing anywhere where your text is being used. But um, oftentimes inside SolidCAM, you're using text for engraving. So that's why 
I'm looking at it from this point of view. But you can do the same sort of variable thing with a lot of different stuff inside of SolidWorks and then uh, with SolidCam. Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at SolidCamSupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.